The federal and provincial governments are struggling to curb the spread of variants while under fire for vaccination rollouts. Meanwhile, a BC company says its antibody treatment could be saving lives. Abcelera is based in Vancouver. Fifteen countries have approved their antibody treatment for emergency use, including Canada and the U.S. The Canadian government even purchased thousands of doses, but... They are sitting in storage while the treatment is saving lives in the U.S. That's according to Carl Hansen, the founding CEO and director of Abcelera. Hi, Mr. Hansen. Good to have you on the program this evening. Thanks for making the time. Thank you, Vashi. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, before I get to questions about uh, how and where your treatment is being used, I just wanted to ask you in, in the simplest of terms, if you could explain to our audience what exactly the treatment does. Sure. Um, the treatment, which is called uh, bamlanivimab, that's that's a mouthful, but perhaps just BAM for short, uh, can best be thought of as synthetic immunity. So it is an antibody therapy. It can be given to patients uh, in the early stages of COVID-19. And if given early, uh, it has been shown through clinical trials to reduce the chance of severe COVID-19 and hospitalization by between 70 and 80%. Uh, it has been shown to be safe. And in trials of over 5,000 patients, we have yet to observe a single death by COVID-19 for patients that receive this treatment early. And when you say early, is there a certain type of patient, like is it older patients or is it anybody really that's kind of been diagnosed but has yet to show those more severe symptoms yet? Yeah, it uh, likely would work for, uh, for many patients. It is currently authorized and directed towards those patients who are, which are at highest risk. Uh, that includes patients that are over the age of 65, uh, those that are obese, um, you know, the vulnerable patients, such as those with uh, compromised immune systems that have been you know, subject to maybe cancer therapy or organ transplant, uh, as well as, uh, you know, other comorbidities. And it is being used uh, in the United States, correct? Yes, it was authorized in, uh, for emergency use in the United States in November. Uh, since then, it has been given to, we believe, over 400,000 patients at more than 5,000 infusion centers. Wow. OK, Th that gets me to the, to the question I think a lot of our audience has, which is uh, what about being used here in Canada? My understanding it is, is that it has emergency authorization here as well, that there's been some procurement of of the treatment, but that it's not e being used to not e not even comparable to what's being used in the United States. Uh, that, that's exactly right. Um, and that is why we wrote the op ed and, and why I've been taking some interviews lately to get attention on this. Uh, Bamlanivimab was authorized in Canada very shortly after the U.S. Uh, Canada was quick to authorize it. Uh, the federal government moved quickly to procure it. So we signed a procurement agreement and bought doses uh, back in November. Uh, but because of some decisions that happened at the provincial and territorial level uh, through committees that are making decisions on recommendations of use, uh, thus far, uh, this treatment has been used in almost no one in Canada. So we have therapies that have been shown to keep people in the hospital and save lives. Uh, they're therapies that are approved in 15 countries. They've been used in nearly half a million people in the U.S. And they have been sitting on the shelf in Canada while people continue to get sick and continue to die of COVID-19. You've called it criminal negligence. Is that right? You know, uh, this is a, uh, a very emotional topic. And uh, perhaps I could have chosen my words more carefully. Uh, what I would say is that, you know, I stand behind the fact that we have therapies here that could help people, the fact that they have not been delivered to patients and that we have not taken a single step to make that happen uh, is unforgivable and very difficult to understand. And I imagine very, I imagine that comes from a, a sense of frustration. I mean, you're a, a Canadian company and, and your product is not being used here. Uh, yeah, we're certainly frustrated and it's also, it comes from, uh, you know, uh, it, it comes from frustration and also the fact that we've seen COVID-19 uh, impact our family members and even employees at the company. You know, we first uh, became aware that the drug was being held back from patients back in December when one of our employees uh, and his parents became very ill. Uh, and at that point, you know, we're confused as to why this had happened, have been trying to reach out to every level of government, uh, policymakers, uh, doctors to try to get action on this since December, uh, believed that working through that system would ultimately uh, bring change, uh, or that at least the increasing weight of data, which is now uh, overwhelming, would cause people to reconsider and take action to get these available. Uh, that has not happened. So at this point, uh, we felt 
you know, it's important to speak out and make this known and hope that others will, uh, others that know what has happened will also join in that. And what is the the hesitation as you as you understand it? Because if you, if you have had that communication, so it's as as I understand what you said, it's basically provinces who have their own process in deciding whether or not things are going to be used have decided against using it. Is that is that accurate? Uh, that is accurate, um, and you know it's it's important to recognize that uh, normally you know the approval of drugs is governed by regulatory bodies. Uh, in the U.S., the FDA, uh, which is probably the foremost regulatory body in the world, has recommended use. Uh, Health Canada, which is our version of the FDA, has also recommended use. The provincial bodies have made a decision that runs contrary to that. Um, that decision uh, by a small group of people uh, and the identity of those people or the composition of those committees is not well known. Uh, neither is the process of deliberation has effectively blocked access to all Canadians, whereas south of the border, if you get sick, you have options today. And you talked about uh, how much product the federal government had procured. Can, can you, in layman's terms, basically what could be available? Like what is the opportunity loss? What, what is available to Canadians uh, ha had the provinces not decided to go this route? So the uh, initial procurement was for 26,000 doses. Um, I believe 18,000 of those were shipped uh, and a very small fraction of those have been used. Uh, as part of that agreement, there was the ability to get access to more treatments. Uh, and you know, it's if we had even kept pace with the United States, uh, and I, I expect that we would have, uh, you know, we would have you know, probably had multiples of that available here in Canada that could have been used to treat patients. Um, it's important for people to understand, uh, you know, that these treatments actually save lives. Um, it, the uh, chief scientific officer of the Biden administration's mm -hmm. COVID task force uh, recently, you know, went on air and tried to communicate to people that these are important therapies they need to get um, and made it clear that every 52 people you treat will save a life. So uh, you can do the math. We have had the opportunity for three months to use these. And we had the opportunity to save lives that um, that is now lost, but we still have COVID-19 and there's still an opportunity um, to have impact on patients. Yeah, I wanted to, to ask you that if, if provinces were to change their minds and now proceed with this treatment, is there more available for purchase? I, I believe there is. I mean, ultimately, that's between the federal government to negotiate with Eli Lilly, which is handling the commercial supply of this. Um, uh, right now, uh, there is uh, availability of bamlanivimab, uh, and I believe that if it was being used in Canada, uh, we would be able to get additional doses. Uh, we certainly can't expect that additional doses will be sent when the ones that we have have been sitting on the shelf. And, and just finally, I know we're, we're so focused on the variant right now throughout much of Canada. This treatment works regardless of, uh, of the variant, or what can you tell us about that? So bamlanivimab is an antibody that binds to the coronavirus in a specific place. Um, because of some mutations, there are variants that are, are resistant to bamlanivimab. Uh, some of those exist in the United States. And for that reason, we have recently uh, begun replacing bamlanivimab as a monotherapy with a combination of antibodies that hit 99% of all variants. Bamlanivimab as a single antibody works for 99% of the cases that currently exist here in Canada. Uh, so we have, you know, therapies on the shelf that work for the variants that we have right now, in particular, the UK variant, which is growing very quickly um, and should be used. OK, thank you, Mr. Hansen. I appreciate you making the time for us today very much. Uh, thank you, Bashi. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.